Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. In this video, I will be discussing Infosys interview experience. Uh, in this video, I will be discussing DSC role interview experience, or you can say SCS role of Infosys. Guys, this interview happened recently only through Hack with Infi, and this interview experience is of a 2022 batch candidate. So guys, make sure that you watch this video till the end. Guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe it as well as join my Telegram group. Also, I post regular updates on different companies which are hiring, as well as the questions which are getting asked in them. So make sure that you do not miss those updates and are present in my Telegram group. Okay, so guys, now let's start this video. And before starting the video, please hit the like button as well as subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so guys, many of you were requesting me to make an ECE interview experience. So guys, I would like to tell you that in this video, I am I am discussing ECE interview experience. But I have gone through many ECE students interview, and I have found that most of the questions are technical questions only. They are not asked their core branch question much. So guys. Even if you are a non CS background, make sure that you prepare for the technical questions like DBMS, OOPS, basics of data structures. You must know these all things to get a job opportunity in Infosys. So I will be discussing EC interview experience. But in this interview also, 80% of the questions were asked from CS subjects, and only one or two questions were asked from core branches. So make this thing no, make this thing clear that technical questions can be asked from you. It is not that that you are non CS IT. So there will be. Your core branch questions only. Okay, so the date of the interview was third July two thousand twenty one. The branch was EC as I have told you. The duration of the interview was forty five minutes. Lot of questions were asked from this guy. Therefore, the interview duration is forty five minutes. First question, as you all know, is tell me something about yourself. I will not go in detail for this particular question. I have discussed this question in earlier videos. You just have to mention those skills in your about yourself in which you are comfortable in. Okay. So second uh, question was, are you a ECE student? So yes, he told that yes, he was a ECE student. Third was, describe sampling theorem. Again, this is a core branch question only. So there were one or two questions which were asked from this guy regarding its his core branch. So question was, describe sampling theorem. Okay, so it states that while taking the samples of a continuous signal, it has to be taken care that sampling rate is equal to or greater than twice the cutoff frequency, and the minimum sampling rate is known as Nyquist rate. Again, guys, I am not a EC background uh, background student, so I uh, simply copied this particular definition from Google. If you want to study in detail about the sampling theorem, you can uh, refer to Google instead of this answer. I have just taken this answer so that I can give you a brief idea what a sampling theorem is. Now, fourth uh, next question was what are different types of communication? Again, there were uh, there are ma mainly two types of communication. One is digital and analog communication. So again, you have to describe this communication in your way. You can simply refer to Google for such answers. Now, next uh, was again a core branch question only. That is, what is a negative feedback and what is a positive feedback? Okay. So first, positive feedback. If the signal feedback from the output is in the phase with the input signal, the feedback is called to be positive. It means that let's suppose uh, in input input there is a certain phase x, and for output feedback also the uh, Uh, the phase is that particular x only. Then it means that they are in both the uh, the, the both the signals are in same phase. So this is known as a positive feedback system. Okay. Next is negative feedback. If the signal feedback is opposite of polarity or out of phase by 180 degree with respect to the input signal, then the feedback is called as negative feedback. So it means that if the uh, output signals uh, If the output signal is different from the input signal by the phase of 180 degree, then it can be called as a negative feedback. So I hope this thing is clear to you. Now, next question was why are you choosing IT over ECE? So as if you are a non uh, CS or IT branch student, then this question will arrive you will be occurring for you in every interview, whether it is Infosys or different company. They will surely ask you why you are opting out of ECE and you want to move into IT. So as there is a simple answer for it you can say that during the course of btech you have worked on different technologies and your interest have moved to those technologies and you want that your career should uh, lie around those technologies only so it is giving you that particular opportunity therefore you just want to pursue your career in it instead of ece so this can be a simple answer you can give otherwise you can give your answer of your own choice now next question was based on dbms that is what is primary key in database Okay, so primary key, as we all know, is the minimal set of attributes or columns which can uniquely identify every tuple. It is not so every tuple in the given table. What does tuple refers to? Tuple refers to the tuple refers to the row in the table. So primary key is the key that can uniquely identify every every row in the table. Now there are two properties of primary key. That is, primary key cannot be null, 
एज वेल एज प्राइमरी की शुड कंटेन यूनिक वैल्यू ओनली सो प्राइमरी की इज गिवन टू आर पर्टिकुलर और सेट ऑफ एट सेट ऑफ कॉलम्स सो दो कॉलम्स शुड हैव यूनिक वैल्यू शुड हैव यूनिक वैल्यू एंड देयर शुड नॉट बी एनी वैल्यू रिपीटिंग ओके नेक्स्ट वॉज वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन हैविंग एंड वेयर क्लॉज तो दिस इज अगेन द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी आस्ट फ्रॉम डी बी एम एस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दैट इज वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वेयर क्लॉज एंड हैविंग क्लॉज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेयर क्लॉज वेयर क्लॉज इज यूज टू फिल्टर द रिकॉर्ड फ्रॉम द टेबल बेस्ड ऑन द स्पेसिफाइड कंडीशन इफ यू नो डी बी एम एस यू राइट द क्वेरी लाइट सिलेक्ट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम टेबल वेयर नो वेयर क्लॉज हेयर गिव्स द गिव्स द कंडीशन बाई विच द फिल्टरिंग ऑफ डेटा टेक्स प्लेस वेयर इज हैविंग क्लॉज हैविंग क्लॉज इज यूज टू फिल्टर रिकॉर्ड फ्रॉम ग्रुप बेस्ड ऑन द स्पेसिफाइड कंडीशन सो वेन एवर वी यूज ग्रुप बाय कंडीशन ऑन अ टेबल एंड आफ्टर दैट वी हैव टू फिल्टर दैट पर्टिकुलर टेबल ऑन द ऑन द ग्रुप विच इज फॉर्म देन वी यूज द हैविंग क्लॉज सो आई होप द डिफरेंस इज क्लियर वेयर क्लॉज इज सिंपली वेयर क्लॉज कैन बी यूज विदाउट ग्रुप बाय क्लॉज बट हैविंग क्लॉज इज ऑलवेज यूज आफ्टर ग्रुप बाय क्लॉज वेयर क्लॉज इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन द टेबल दैट इज गिवन टू अस वेयर एज हैविंग क्लॉज इज एप्लीकेबल ओनली ऑन द रिजल्ट सेट दैट वी हैव गॉटन आफ्टर द ग्रुप बाय स्टेटमेंट हैज बीन अप्लाइड ऑन इट आई होप दिस थिंग इज क्लियर टू Now, where clause, where clause cannot contain aggregate function, whereas having clause can contain aggregate function. For example, if we group by a table based on the employee IDs, or you can say employee names. So, if we uh, if we have grouped by the uh, table using uh, profession of profession of the employees, then we can say where count star is equivalent to three. Having count star is equivalent to three. So, there uh, having clause can contain aggregate functions. But where clause cannot contain aggregate function. We cannot say select star from table where a count star is greater than three. So this is the wrong statement. With have where clause, there cannot be aggregate functions which are which can be used. Now the next question was similar to the uh, this question only that what are the aggregate functions? So after the when my friend gave this answer, so interviewer simply asked him that what are the aggregate functions you are referring to in your answer? So there are multiple aggregate functions. The main aggregate functions are sum. It is used to sum all the values in the given column. Average. Again, taking taking the average out of the column, max value in the column, min value in the column, and number of entries that is the count, count of entries inside that particular column. So these are the main aggregate functions that can be asked in an interview. Now, coming to the coming to language uh, portion, that is which language you prefer. Interview asked my friend that which language you prefer for coding or uh, OOPs concepts. So he said Java. That he prefers Java. Next thing was next question was what are abstract classes. now abstract class is in java a class which is declared as abstract is known as an abstract class it can be it can have abstract and non abstract methods it needs to be extended and its method needs to be implemented it cannot be in instantiated so what what an abstract class is see first of all we need to know what are abstract methods so abstract methods are those methods whose definition are is not given in a class so once a abstract method is present in a class it automatically becomes the abstract class but one thing in java is that we have to mention abstract keyword with the name of the class so abstract classes are those classes which contain abstract as well as non abstract methods and we have to always an abstract class must be declared with an abstract keyword as i have told you now there were a certain more points for this particular abstract class that that is it can have abstract and non abstract method it can have the methods which do not have definition as well as it this class can have the methods Uh, which uh, whose definition are present in the present with the function name only now it cannot be instantiated that is the object of abstract class cannot be formed it can have constructors and static methods also the abstract class can contain constructors and the uh, static methods now it can have final methods which will force the subclass not to change the body of the method so these were some of the points regarding abstract class so i hope this uh, particular definition is clear to you now what does a final keyword before a class indicates okay so it's a simple question the class the final keyword before the class indicates that the class cannot be inherited so final keywords can be used with classes with methods with the variable so final keyword with class indicates that that particular class cannot be inherited by some other class i hope this thing is clear to you now what are interfaces in java so guys there is a very good article on javed point regarding interfaces in java you can simply simply refer to that article if possible i will give you this link in the description box otherwise you can simply type interface in java on google and first article will be of javed point only okay next thing was explain bsc that is binary search tree so is the uh, easiest way to uh, easiest way to explain binary search tree is by drawing this diagram see the easiest definition of binary search tree is that the left node the left nodes are uh, the value of the left nodes is less than the root node 
and the values of the right node is greater than the root node so this is the simple definition of what a bst is now coming to the complexity the search search complexity of binary search tree is o of log n with base 2 okay so i hope this thing is clear to you you can simply answer it by saying that by drawing this diagram or you can simply say that the values of the nodes on the left side of the root is smaller than the is smaller and the values of the nodes on the right side is greater than the root node okay now if you have to find a kth largest element in array which data structure you will use so the simple answer is we can use min heap data structure now we can find kth largest element with sorting technique also but that will be little complex because there can be multiple values of the same uh, multiple numbers with the same value so that would be a difficult difficult technique for that particular reason we are using a data structure called min heap if we have to find kth largest element but if you want to find kth min uh, kth um, smallest element then you will have to use max heap so these are this is the you can say interchangeable things for largest element kth largest element we will use min heap and for kth smallest element we will use max heap so guys i hope this these all questions are clear to you these were all the questions which were asked to this particular guy in this interview i hope the things are clear to you i hope you like the video and guys please make sure that you subscribe it like this video and join my telegram group also because i am really posting different stuffs regarding tcs also and regarding this infosys interview experiences also so i hope you will be subscribing this channel so guys thank you for watching this video